In this video, I want to talk to you about non-stock items in Sage 50. They're frequently misunderstood and therefore misused. Um, now, to really understand non-stock items properly, you'll have to understand a little bit about stock items and how the two different types differ. And I'll say right up front that despite what the names sound like, the choice between non-stock and stock has nothing to do with, normally, with whether you normally keep this on hand. It only has to do with how you want to account for these items in the system. So when you're setting up a new item, um, of course after you enter the item ID and description, you'll put in an item class. And here among other things you can choose between stock items and non-stock items. And you'll see that some fields disappear or change description based on what you uh, what you've selected. They do this because some of the fields aren't relevant. Like here, we've got um, a costing method, quantity on hand available, minimum stock reorder quantity. Those are all appropriate for stock items, but for non-stock, they just go away because you don't need them. Now, a stock item is just exactly what you think of a normal inventory item as being. Sage 50 is going to track how many you bought, what you paid for them, how many you still have on hand, how many you sold, and when you sell them, it will relieve inventory and associate the cost of that unit with the sale so that you've got uh, you know, per unit profitability tracking available to you. Because the amount of detail that's tracked on stock items, you have a lot more reporting options available to you. Uh, for example, inventory profitability report, inventory stock status report, inventory unit activity report, and inventory valuation report all report on stock items. Um, and when I say stock items, I'm also lumping in with that. Things like master stock items, serialized assemblies, um, those all function the same way. But they report on stock items, but they do not report on any other uh, item types or item classes such as non-stock items. Now, non-stock items you can still buy and sell, um, but they're not tracked in the same level of detail. Um, so you can't tell how many you have on hand. It's difficult to find out how many you bought and sold. Um, and when you sell them, uh, you, in most cases you don't have a cost associated with the sale, so you can't do profitability reporting and the timing of your um, you know, of your cost versus your related income may not uh, may not match up. You know, most of the time, a non-stock item is going to end up posting directly to uh, a cost of sales or an expense account when you purchase it, versus a, a stock item will will post to an inventory account. Um, essentially, a non-stock item you can think of is just a way to make your data entry easier, um, so that you don't have to remember GL accounts. Um, or you can have uh, descriptions automatically filled in on, on invoices and POs and things like that. Um, you know, they're used when you don't want any inventory tracking for those items. Uh, some examples, if you're purchasing materials directly for a job, uh, you might do, use that. Or um, if you're tracking your inventory outside of Sage 50, um, you might use non-stock items then. Or you can even use them for, for non-sales related uh, purchases, um, like if you want to set up items for utilities um, or rent or things like that, then the data entry person doesn't have to remember which GL account to use. So that's the basics of the, the difference in how they work. So let's take a little look at setting them up. Um, as I mentioned before, you choose your item class right here, either stock or non-stock, and the available fields will change based on on your selection. Now this is a very important choice because you cannot change it later. Once you've saved this new item, you can't uh, you can't change the item class. Um, so be sure you get that right the first time. Now after that, again you've got a costing method down here for stock items. This is another one that you can't change later, so make sure you get it right. If you don't know what should go in there, then you need to be talking with your CPA uh, about what the correct costing method is. Minimum stock and reorder quantity are optional fields on a stock item. You can use them or not, uh, but they go away when you're doing a non-stock. And then up here we've got our GL accounts. And you've got, whether you're doing a stock or a non-stock, you'll have the same three fields up here, although the descriptions will change. First one is the same on both, that's the sales account. 
So whatever account you want uh, the sales for this item to go to, that's what you put in there. Um, on a stock item, the second account is the GL inventory account. And of course, that's the inventory account that will get debited when you purchase that item. And the third account is the GL cost of sales account. And so that's the account that when you sell one of these, then the, the cost, based on your costing history, will come out of inventory and go into cost of sales. Now let's switch this to a non-stock item. And you can see that the description on the second account changes to GL salary and wages account. I know that's confusing description for it. Just ignore that and remember that it works the same way as the as the accounts for the stock items and that when you purchase this item, this second account, that's the one that is uh, going to be debited uh, when you buy that. So in most cases you're going to put that to an expense account or a cost of sales account. Um, like here you, know, you may just put that to whatever related um, your know, cost of sales account um, you want to use for that item. So I'm going to pull up a little test item that I set up here. And now we're going to talk about the this field right here, last unit cost. This is a really important field um, with non-stock items. Um, with a stock item, the only time you can even enter anything there is before you've bought any of those. After that, it will be grayed out and it will just display your last cost. With a non-stock item, it will let you put a cost in there. And, and some people, uh, without realizing the significance of it, will just enter their last cost in so they can keep track of what they usually pay for these. But that's a big mistake. Um, if you enter a cost for this, then... Sage 50 will make a cost of goods sold entry every time you sell this item. Now, in some cases, people want to do that, um, but unless you unless you fully understand that um, and are intending to do that, do not put an entry in this last unit cost field. So here I've set up, I've entered an invoice using this test item, and you can see we sold it for $25. There's the sales journal, credits to income, debits accounts receivable for $25. But now, let me come back here and enter a last unit cost in there. And I'll save that. I'm going to reopen my invoice. And I'm going to save this invoice again, which will cause it to recalculate and repost that invoice. Now, when I go back... To my sales journal you can see it is now booked to cost a sales entry for ten dollars um, now in this case because I had the same account in both my GL salary and wages account and the cost of sales account there's no net effect on the general ledger so it doesn't do any harm except that you've got a lot of extra entries in there cluttering things up so that's what happens when you enter a last unit cost now you can get rid of it relatively easily if I go back, zero that out, resave it, go back and edit my invoice again, just save that. And there you see my invoice is back uh, the way it was, or my, my sales journal. Now I don't want you to think that if you enter a last unit cost that all of your posted invoices are suddenly going to have cost of sales associated with them. That's not the case. You would have to actually go into the invoice, open it up, and resave it or reprint it, which would cause it to repost. You know, and then it would end up with the cost of sales on it at that point. So there you have it. Non-stock items versus stock items. Nothing to do with whether or not you keep it in stock normally. Everything to do with how you want the accounting to take place.